things I wanted to show is um, uh, is the pre-flight pan uh, panel. Um, you know display performance, so in order for me to kind of navigate around this document without kind of slowing me up, uh, I'll actually go to view and display performance and make sure that's typical display. It just makes sure that all the, um, the content is, is not, not at a high res. Um, just makes you move around faster. I know that it is high res just based on the fact that I can click on it and go to my links panel and then see that my actual uh, pixels per inch and effective pixels per inch are both 300 and it's at a CMYK document. Um, so for the pre-flight panel, down here you can see there's like a three errors um, icon here. Um, this should be green and it should just say no errors if this was um, perfectly ready for you know the press or whatnot and exporting. Um, so what you can do is just click on that uh, flyout menu and then hit pre-flight panel whenever you see that error. Um, and you can open up this dialog box and see um, where your overset text is. So if you remember last time when we have a text box that's smaller than the text that um, that's supposed to fit into it, it means that there's overset text in there. So there needs to be a, a text frame that needs to uh, be increased in size in order to... Um, uh, get rid of this error. So I can click on these numbers here and it tells me what page this error is going to be uh, displayed on. So I'll click on 6. And of course that's going to be in my page 6. So when I um, I can see that here in my pages panel too. I can see 6 and 7. My spread is, is highlighted. Okay. So I'm going to click off of here and click W um, on my keyboard and just zoom in and select this box again that I had the error. And you can see that I just have this one little um, uh, text that's hidden in the back. So now once I close that or open that up to allow the text to come through, um, uh, my error is gone. So rather than kind of going through this entire document and seeing if I can find that little, that little icon that shows up if I have over text here, which is like this little plus sign in the bottom corner of the box, um, you can just do you can just do it this way and you'll go right to the um, thing that's giving you the error and, and just can adjust it as such. So here's uh, page 17 as well. I have an error as well. So I can just, you know, extend that box and so on. Another thing that this pre-flight panel is going to do for you is, um, is let you um, understand what images are not up to date uh, right away. So, um, or missing. Um, so here I have modified link, it says. Um, and I know that this link here on page six, when I click on it, it has been modified. So this is a, a composition for like a shoe section um, that I did. And so this one um, showing up on page six, um, I can see that that's where my error is going on. So I can go to links and then um, under links, I can see my image and I have that, uh, that yield sign. You know, that's what it looks like basically, a yield sign with an exclamation point in the middle. And that, um, it's telling me that uh, um, uh, that that image just needs to be actually updated. So I'm gonna, um, with that selected here, I'm gonna hit this uh, kind of rot circular double arrow thing. It's looks like a recycling symbol, um, but I'm gonna click on it and then the image is, is going to then update with whatever changes were saved from the last time. So now I'm, I'm out of errors and that's, and that's essentially what I wanna do. Um, this, at this point, I can export this um, as a, uh, uh, I can print it right away, right on a, a, on a press, or I can export a print-ready PDF for a, a, a press operator. Another thing I wanted to show are the overprint preview tools. So um, just like in Photoshop, you can um, see the color separations in this. So here's one. Um, you can go to this menu by going under Window and Output um, and Separations Preview. And so this is, this is uh, going to get you this dialog box here. And you can see you can actually turn on or off the cyan, magenta, yellow, black um, uh, ink layers um, as well as any Pantone layers. So for this design in particular, I know that for a fact I don't want any Pantone inks on there because that's an extra color on the press. And it's going to cost money to order the color and load up the press with it. I just want CMYK, so um, 
Uh, what you can do is actually just turn off these colors here and this is feeding in from the uh, Photoshop document to which you can you, you can see your actual color separations and I'm just going to show this um, Pantone color red on my on my design and really what I'm looking for is whatever's left on these spreads as that Pantone red is going to be the thing that I need to change and make sure that that's not a Pantone red anymore so I'm just kind of rolling through these spreads looking for um, whatever it is that's making that color. And it's this, this piece here is, um, is my problem. And so if I were to send this to a press operator, they would just have, you know, they would run the entire press and just that one color would just make this little, you know, goofy shape that it's not supposed to make. Um, so there you could just actually, um, you know, select the color that you want and, it's, and then it's going to change uh, to whatever color it needs to be for that item. And as you're checking again, you can just go and, and find any instance of it. It's too bad that here you can't really, there is no, um, there is no uh, setting to which you can jump to a Pantone color within the layout automatically, just like you can with the pre-flight panel um, and overset text or images that are not up updated. Um, or missing, um, but this is kind of, this is as close as it gets right now um, to something like that. So it's, it's all visual and just kind of checking the layout to make sure that everything is, um, is reflected fine. So I have no, um, you know, objects or ink on there that, that is the Pantone anymore. Again, as you remember last time, um, if you have that Pantone color uh, here in your swatches, you can actually just delete it here too. And since it didn't ask me to replace it, that means that I didn't have it on, this, on the spreads to begin with at this point. So that's also good. Another thing as well is I have an RGB color here um, in my uh, swatches palette. If you, in your swatches palette, another way to check for um, uh, just to make sure that you don't have colors that you don't want in there. Um, just use this drop down menu and then hit select all unused. And that's going to select all the colors in your swatches palette that you're not using um, and then just delete them. And so now you know um, exactly wh what colors you're using in the whole design um, um, as far as swatch colors. Of course this whole um, uh, design is going to be made up of uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, black ink but your swatch colors um, in the design uh, are going to show up uh, um, in the swatches palette here. And of course, these are all cyan, magenta, yellow, black, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, conversions, if you will. So, you know, here's our 100% uh, magenta, zero cyan, zero yellow, zero black. So it says the, you know, obviously it says, you know, what the uh, color values are for each ink here. But for the RGB object, if you have any RGBs here that are being used in your swatches palette, just double click it and um, under color mode here, um, use the drop down and then select CMYK. Make sure that this color type process is selected, otherwise it'll do a, a spot color, which is basically like a CMYK Pantone, which is not what you're going to want anyway. Select process and then um, usually I have name with color value checked off so I can see what the conversion is of it. And then just hit OK and then throughout this whole entire layout it's just going to swap out the RGB for the CMYK conversion. So that'll save you a ton of time too. You don't have to really go through and select one, go CMYK, CMYK. I mean that's not what you have to do as far as with color so that's, that's a, a plus. Um... And then back to my uh, separations, then I can see that all I have is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black colors. And you can turn them on or off to see what's going on. So all my cyan and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of uh, print is, uh, with catalogs, if it's small, like um, 8 point to 10 point, I would say 8 point with, um, I would say 8 point is, is uh, uh, 8 to 10. Um, you want to have it basically one color black a lot of people will do like a cyan magenta yellow black um, mix for a really really dark um, you know that real uh, that uh, um, uh, rich black 
um, using all four colors mixed together to make the blackest black um, uh, text. You're not going to want to do that for body copy text because if if the press runs and um, and and the uh, alignment is just a little bit off, then all of your text is going to have this kind of magenta cyan, kind of like this vibrating look. Um, so typically for like a catalog, um, all the text should be black. So usually what I do at the end of like a, a catalog piece like that is I just make sure that my black is, is uh, all of my text is just 100% black. And then I'll turn on the other, um, the other inks, uh, you know, just to make sure and look through that I don't have any um, um, black text there. My little thin red lines are probably, they might cause some problems, but um, we'll let them make sure that's aligned right anyhow. All right. Um, 